There is great demand for assistive technology in emerging new markets. But actually bringing and launching those products in those markets is a little bit more complex than many people think. One of the great myths that we face is that if we build it, they will come. But the truth is that simply building your product means that it's likely that nothing will happen. Much more action is required. Because building a product or service is only the first step in reaching your market or audience. For your product to take root, the setting has to be receptive, a fertile environment, if you like. In working with a number of startups and developers and vendors of assistive technology, being able to identify eight key factors that is suggested that you review in planning to launch in those markets. What you should be looking to ask yourself is who is working in this area and what are they doing? Should we think of them as a partner or as a competitor? And on that basis, what action should I take? The eight areas within that ecosystem to consider range from policy to awareness, to the process of matching needs to technologies and solutions, the availability of training, the model of provision, provision of, of post-sales support and customer support, the availability of accessible content and information, and the culture of research and development. Awareness is one of the most critical factors. How will you ensure that people with disabilities and others are aware of your product? The idea of awareness may be both within the general population, within the community of professionals involved in recommendations, and of course, people with disabilities themselves. Building upon that, there's a process in many places where advice and assessment, matching people's needs to the technology that is available, is undertaken. Understanding how that is done and how you can ensure that your product is considered in that process will be very helpful to you. Similarly, many products require some level of training. Different training models are available and increasingly we see online training as an option. But understanding if that works within your market is important. And if not, will you provide the training yourself? Will you seek a partner? This is something that NGOs can be involved in. Alongside that is actually how will people get to your products? How will they pay for it? How will they download it? And how will they use it? Increasingly, as we uh, use apps on mobile phones and tablets, there's a single source for many assistive technologies. Making sure that that's available within the market that you are intending will be really important to you. Similarly, post-sale support, technical support for users will also need to be available. Whilst support may be provided internationally, most people prefer technical support to be available locally in local languages and available from local vendors who they trust. If your product needs information, guidance, then it will probably need availability of accessible content. If your product is designed to access content, you need to know that actually there will be content that can be downloaded and used on it, and in particular, availability in first language. And finally, all products need development for the future. Is there a culture of research and development that you can tap into? universities that you can link with and user groups who may be able to give you feedback. That background may be really important for the next iteration of your product. And of course, all of this needs to be coordinated. Who is it that's undertaking the development of policy and guidance and coordinating the assistive technology ecosystem within the community you want to serve? You can then Look at each of these areas and ask yourself who is working in this area? What are they doing? How are they doing it? When do they do it? Why do they do it? What's their motivation? And where? 
online, offline, locally, nationally. The best models of implementation look at each of these separately. And what we found is that if we can identify areas of strength in our, pie, in our diagram here, those are marked as green, and areas of weakness marked in red, we can begin to prioritize which areas need most intervention by us as a company. By intervening in those areas, we build the ecosystem. We have capacity building taking place. And together, the more of these areas that are yellow and green, the more likely it is that our products will be successful.